it does feel good to be back in my old row body. Now, where is that mailman? He has a package for me. He doesn't leave one of those little cards. So you're telling me that Goose is in Darren's cloud? I don't know how it happened either. Guess Darren has some tricks up his sleeve. Big sleeves, big tricks. Delivery for GGSP? Whoa! Uh, hey, Mr. Mailman, uh, yeah, that's us. You can leave it right there. Righto. Well, uh, you'll need to sign this. Thank you. So, uh, first delivery of the year? Yeah. Consoles are getting big these days, eh? Oh, um, not like this. All done. Welcome back, by the way. Ah, thank oh. you. Bye. What in the name of Herobrine did you order? Not another life-size Pokemon costume. I need those, and I didn't even order this. What is it? I have no idea. Oh, wait, it says laser sealed. Laser. Darren! <laughs> oh, where is that robot when you need him? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Good Game Spawn Point, our first show back for 2019. I'm Jem and I'm Rad. <laughs> oh, that was weird. I'm sure Darren has a perfectly good explanation for this. Coming up on the show, we review the epic Disney crossover RPG, Kingdom Hearts 3. Plus, you review Gang Beasts. <laughs> and a big scoop of gaming news. And we'll get stuck into your questions at the Ask SP Desk too. OK, we have got to get this open. Oh, totally, but let's start the review first, yeah? Good little help. Now you got this. <laughs> the wind is howling like this swirling storm inside. Mm -hmm. Could Ooh. I be in heaven knows I what? what we just saw, but wow. Kingdom Hearts 3 is the long-awaited addition to the Kingdom Hearts franchise, which began way back in 2002. Oh, Jim, I can't review like this. Darren, what's in the box? Patience, you two. I'm just busy in the cloud right at the moment. Uh, oh, did I hear something about Kingdom Hearts 3? Oh, right, yeah. So Kingdom Hearts 3 is the th third... Wait, no, because there was that one in the middle, which makes it the... Oh, I've lost my place. The timelines are so confusing. Hey, Darren, could you make sense of this for us, please? Affirmative, Jim. It couldn't be simpler. Kingdom Hearts 3 is the 12th game in the franchise and a direct sequel to Kingdom Hearts 2, which came out in 2005 for the PS2, which took place a year after the events of Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories that, canonically, was the sequel to the first Kingdom Hearts game released in 2002. Sora, don't ever change. This is not simple, Darren. Since then, the series has appeared on a wide variety of consoles, such as the Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, and PSP, with re-released collections of the older games made available on PS3 and PS4. And now, with Kingdom Hearts 3, Xbox as well. Does that clear things up? Uh, yeah, thanks, Darren. It's kind of a running gag at this point that the plot of the series can be tricky to follow. So let's cut right to the chase. Oh, that's easy. You play as Sora, a plucky 16-year-old who is sent out on a quest to restore his lost strength and gain the power of waking in order to defeat Master Xehanort, Organization 13, and the Heartless. Armed with his Keyblade and accompanied by Donald Duck and Goofy, this quest sees Sora crossing paths and teaming up with all manner of Disney characters. Like Elsa and Anna from Frozen, the crew from Toy Story... Put her there. ...and even Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. Caption Jack Sparrow. 
sure is. It's probably the most ambitious mishmash of fandoms I've ever seen outside of fan fiction. Uh, but ambition can be a double-edged sword gem. With so many iconic characters crammed in here, I couldn't help but feel a bit let down by how some of them were represented. Oh, easy. What is this, Sparta? But what did you think? Honestly, I didn't find it to be that much of an issue. Last one to slide to the bottom's a rotten egg. What's lacking in the animation department, I feel is made up for in the awesome background detail and art styles especially given how many art styles it tries to mimic with each new world. Tigger! Even Saw and the gang get dressed up, though sometimes I wish they didn't. <laughs> it's just so surreal and a little bit magical to see all these characters outside of their respective films, and that was enough to keep me glued. I think if the story had flowed a little better, then I might have been more on board. Because you're right, it is crazy to see Sora throwing Mike from Monsters Inc. like a bowling ball or to dance with Rapunzel and Flynn Rider. But to me, it felt like acting out stories I've seen before, except way shorter. We're going to try and put an end to this crazy winter. You spend half your time either slogging through endless swarms of enemies or stuck in long, drawn-out cutscenes. We sent Sora there. Well, that was then. And this is now. It just stopped me from ever getting invested in anyone's story. You do get bounced around a lot. You think you know what's going on, and then boom, you're cooking with ratatouille. Then you're collecting honey for Pooh Bear. Then you're flying through space in a laser fight. That being said, though, while not all of these activities are enjoyable, particularly the space flight sections, which are required to access new worlds, I'd be lying if I said I didn't get a kick out of the ridiculousness of it all. Well, that aside, I also did find the combat pretty weak. It's very much a hack and slash fest, with little refinement. You're just mashing attack for the majority of the time, interrupted by super moves. And while they are very colourful and vibrant, they're also so excessive that they can block your view of the battlefield. Yes. And they're grunted so frequently that they lose their wow factor after the first few missions. I have to disagree. Yes, the combat does follow the hit it till it dies method, but overall it allows you to play your own way. Whether that's hitting enemies from afar with spells, or going in nice and close for a melee attack. And while the special attacks are very generous, I think they cycle through them enough that you get a nice variety. And you know what? I thought they looked great. But don't you think they've just crammed too much into this game? So much of it feels needlessly complicated. For instance, there's a massive selection of attacks and moves you can equip to each member of your party as they gain AP as well as armor and items, some of which you can create shortcuts for. But they're so frustrating to try and access in battle that I barely ever used them. It can't be. And that just added to what was already a frustrating game for me. Kingdom Hearts 3 is definitely a game you're either gonna love or hate. While it definitely has its more serious moments, I don't get the sense it's taking itself too seriously. <laughs> and honestly, that's half the fun for me, just waiting to see what it would throw at me next. When did you get so small and tiny? I really enjoyed this. I'm giving it four out of five rubber chickens. I can kind of understand why people love this series. After all, it wouldn't have the following it does if there wasn't something that people connected to. But this is just not for me. I'm giving Kingdom Hearts 3 two out of five rubber chickens. <laughs> Good morning, Australia! And welcome to The Scoop with me, Darren! Finally, a chance to bring my particular charm and knowledge to the very latest gaming news. Welcome today, Rav! Oh, thanks! Oh, Darren, we even said you could take over Scoop, and where did these people come from? Work with me, Rad. Oh, no! <laughs> We're just a couple of peas in a pond, you and I, Darren. Uh, it's peas in a pod, Rad. Uh, but anyway, let's get on with the Scoop! Now, quite a few pieces of gaming news emerged over the summer holidays. Did you hear that apparently the Queen's golden Wii was located? Whoa! Does this mean the Queen is actually a secret gamer? You know what? I bet she'd be a Kingdom Hearts fan. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of Clash Royale? Oh, oh! How about some Castlevania? This is my show, Rad. <laughs> 
A special golden Nintendo Wii was sent to the Queen as a publicity stunt some years ago. Uh, it never reached her, of course, for security reasons. But a channel known as People Make Games managed to track down the current owner, a collector in the Netherlands. Oh, look at it. So shiny and reflective. Almost as nice as my robotty, don't you think? Oh, what? On to another piece of news to hit the gamosphere. A new Dr. Mario game is coming to mobile. Dr. Mario World is set to be a puzzle game and is currently due to come out later this year. This announcement appeared following other news that the Mario Kart mobile game, Mario Kart Tour, originally planned to release in March this year, has been delayed. It's looking like we won't see that one until midway through the year as well. I guess it's better that they spend a little bit of extra time just getting it right. And it is interesting to see how Nintendo is moving into the mobile space in a bigger way this year. Affirmative. Moving on, and an astounding innovation from a modder known as Ben Heck. Heck has single-handedly created a PS4 controller mod to allow for one-handed gameplay. Using a combination of clay, tape, some 3D printing tech, and wiring skills, he created the custom controller, which apparently works quite smoothly. What the heck? That is one heck of a heck hack. It would be great to see Sony and others get on board and create some more official accessible controllers, too. Indeed. I only barely manage with my scoops. <laughs> uh, what do you think of this controller mod, Boatmeal? <laughs> Wait, what? My beloved dog, the Sausage Prince Custard Bun Beautiful Boatmeal is here? How did I not know about this? Why, Boatmeal is my producer on the scoop, Rad. And I must say, it's great to have such a good boy to bounce ideas around with. Uh, uh, now, what do you think of that controller, Mr. Meal? Ah, oh, you'd like to see a custom controller for dogs. Why, that's a positively splendid idea. Uh, now, the scoop has had somewhat of a revamp, but one thing we couldn't forget is the extra scoop. It's always fun to see what pieces of curiosity arise out of the world of gaming. Uh, what have you found for us over the break, Rad? Well, Darren, I've found myself quite beguiled by a No Man's Sky fan video made by a dad and his five-year-old daughter. In their video, called Nomad Squadron, Matt Silverman and daughter Amelia use mostly in-game footage as the backdrop for their outer space travels. They also explore a strange and backyard-esque planet in search of <clears throat> uh, new technology. Adorable. Delightful. See, games and pan-galactic exploration can really bring the family together. <sighs> and that's all the time we have for today's scoop. Thank you for joining me, Rad. The pleasure is all mine, Darren. Uh, so should I stay or should I... Uh, just stay there, Rad. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, see you next week. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, they love me. <laughs> they love me. And, and you a bit, Rad. But mostly me. They love me. They love me. I'm Nicholas. I'm Caitlin. I'm Lorena. And today we're going to be reviewing Gang, Gang Beasts. I just had that all the way down. Please help me. <laughs> I just jumped over the side. Run, run, run. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Gang Beasts is a fighting game with little jelly creatures and you have to try and win the matches. The objective of Gang Beasts is to eliminate all of the other players while you try to survive yourself. It's a party game that you can play with your friends. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what I Here, I'll help you. <laughs> and it can get very hectic sometimes. <laughs> no, not again. When you first start, you just plonked into this world and then, like, you don't know what to do. You're just walking around and then you press a button and then you're grabbing onto someone. It's really easy to learn, but, like, I feel like it would have been better with having a tutorial. It's kind of hard to know the controls, but after you play it for a bit, you get how it works. Yeah, and I want to climb up. I want to climb up. How do you elevator. climb? You just feel like controlling a big, heavy dummy. You know, it's just like having to swing it around, always having to do like weird stuff like that. 
So there's a lot of modes in the game, from melee mode, which is literally a free-for-all frenzy, and people are secretly teaming up. Quick, Lorena, if you move the planks, then uh -oh. they're gonna die. Most of the times we played melee, like combat one-on-one -on -one sort of thing. And then there's another game mode called soccer, where it's literally soccer, but like you can actually, you can bend the rules a bit so you can like grab people and just hold them there and then let your other teammate score for you. Get the ball, get the ball, get the ball. Grab them! Grab them whoever gets the ball. And there's also other ones like a team mode. So you work as a team to get people out. Yeah, what? catch those blobs! What are you? Something like that was really weird to me was how like wacky the maps are like, there's one, you're on a train or you're on some trucks. Others, you're on an elevator. And by far the weirdest was when you're in like a meat factory and then just sausages and piles of meat just kept on falling down. Ready for sausages yeah. to jump out of the sky? Oh <laughs> One of my strategies was to hold anything you can or lay down for some at the start because no one knew how to grab each other. Oh, I'll knock you off the edge like I did last time. <laughs> As a multiplayer experience, like on the couch, it is like so fun. Everyone screamed because of how weird this thing is. We fly! <laughs> There's constant laughter. <laughs> One thing that happened was Caden kept winning almost every round. He won four in a row at one point. I don't know why he kept winning. This is my victory dance. Watch my victory dance. Yeah, I ended up doing a victory dance and then jumping off the edge. Oh, yeah! <laughs> my favourite thing about the game is when you, win, when you play with friends and you win. Two points for me. I also liked how wacky it is and how random it is. That's something that I really enjoyed. If you die, then I die. What's that? My least favourite thing about the game is when you lose. No! 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 <laughs> the game would be less confusing if there were really, like, more simple controls and ones that were actually useful. My least favourite thing was not being able to figure out how to climb the walls. I can't climb! Overall, I would want to play it again and it was really fun. It's a very, like, abstract and a really social game. You're not alone. You can be able to play with friends and stuff, which is really cool. And I give it four and a half out of five rubber chickens. I rate this game five out of five rubber chickens. I would give it three out of five rubber chickens because it is a good game. It's very polished and, like, how wacky and fun it is. But I feel like it's still missing some features. I don't feel like it's properly finished. I would give it five out of five rubber chickens. It's an amazing game and it's really fun to just run around as a little jelly character. <laughs> Orange wins again. All right, Gem, we are Bacula and Spectacular. Ready for another year of Ask SP Questions. Yes, and I, for one, am feeling fresh, fine and fabulous after the break. Plus, I see the GGSP inbox is jam-packed. Jam-packed? Who put jam in there? No, no, jam-packed with queries. Oh. Right. Which you better get into, starting with a video question from... <laughs> it's from Rad's Dota 2 Assistant. Oh, hey, friend! Hey, GGSP, Rad's Dota 2 Assistant here, and I've got two questions for you. Number one, when will Terraria 1.3 come to mobile? Number two, is Subnautica going to be released on the Nintendo Switch? For now, that's it. See you. Why, thank you, my Dota 2 assistant, the most favourite of my assistants, and many thanks for your assistance. Now, in answer to your first query about when the Terraria 1.3 version will be coming to mobile, well, there's been confirmation that it's in the works and apparently due to arrive at some stage in 2019. It's also coming to the Nintendo Switch. But, of course, in the world of game development, little is ever certain, right, Rad? Mm. So you might want to keep an eye out on the Terraria sites for news and updates. I guess you could try playing a certain other game in the meantime time, though. Oh, which game would that be? The waiting game. Ah, oh, boo, the waiting game is no fun. As for if Subnautica is going to be released for Nintendo Switch, I haven't heard any specific plans for this thus far. Some have even suggested that the Switch's hardware might not be able to handle Subnautica in its current form, at least. But I suppose that is debatable. There is a new Subnautica expansion that's just hit early access, though. Yes, below zero. That looks pretty cool. 
I see, in fact. Now to another cool question from Vicky in Kempsey, New South Wales. Hi, I have heard that Super Smash Bros Ultimate has something called Echo Fighters. It has something to do with additional fighters. I just want to know if it's true or not. P.S. I love that Pichu, Isabel, Corin, and Crom are in this one. P.S.S. I've watched this show for a long time and it still keeps me coming back for more. Well, thanks, Vicky. If you're wondering about Echo Fighters, well, I think we should ask Darren to explain this. As much as I love Smash, sometimes the systems can be a bit complicated. That's some good thinking, Jem. Darren knows. Hello, Darren speaking. Hey, Darren, it's Jem and Rad at the Ask SP desk. Um, Vicky was wondering about Super Smash Bros Ultimate Echo Fighters. What are they and are they in Super Smash Bros Ultimate? Affirmative, Jem. Echo Fighters are certain playable characters on the Super Smash Bros. roster that are basically duplicates of other characters, perhaps with some slight alterations. Uh, for example, there's Dark Samus, who is an Echo Fighter of Samus, and Daisy, who is an Echo of Princess Peach. There's also Lucina, Dark Pit, Crom, Richter, and Ken. Bring it on! Oh, is there any benefit to using an Echo Fighter opposed to an OG character? I don't believe so, aside from personal preference. Oh, well, informative as always. Thanks for the informative information, Darren. I echo that gratitude. Thanks, Darren. My pleasure, my pleasure. Wait, I think you're echoing, Darren. We have an Echo Darren on the line. I just said it twice, Rad. All righty, now I think we might have time for one more quick question. How about this one from Aaron in Mandura, WA? Just wondering who is going to be replacing Goose on Good Game Spawn Point and when it will air again in 2019. If possible, could I be a host on Good Game Spawn Point someday? I love gaming and started when I was a kid. Thank you, Aaron. To your first question on who will be replacing Goose, well, can Goose ever truly be replaced? I like to think of it more as welcoming someone new and unique into the GGSP family. Family! Besides, Goose has left some pretty big shoes to fill. I mean, like, actual shoes. Oh, why would he leave these here? Is he just walking around barefoot? Oh, weird. Anyway, I'm sure we'll find out who our new person is very soon. Wait, don't, you don't think that's what's in the package that Darren ordered? <gasps> that sounds like a totally Darren thing to do. Although, I hope they're okay in there. Uh, as far as when GGSP will air again in 2019, well, it looks like it may be happening, um, let's see. Uh, oh, right now! Yes, we're officially back to our old tricks again. With segments rolling out online Monday to Friday, and then the full episode on ABC Me, Saturdays at 9 a.m. Oh, great promo skills there, Jem. Now to whether you might someday get to be a host on GGSP. Well, I say shoot for the moon. And even if you miss, you might uh, get to see Barjo on the way. Is that the saying? That is definitely the saying. And hey, I started out as a young fan of the show myself, and here I am, so you never know. Anything is possible if you stay true to the GGSP motto. Be nice, have, have fun, fun, and keep gaming. gaming. Plus, you could always apply to be considered as one of our U reviewers. Info on how to do that is on our website. Or you could try sending us a video question. We love those. And on that note, we're out of time. If you have a question you'd like to see us scratch our noggins over, head here and send it in. Aw, oh, ye old website swish. How I've missed ye. We should also mention we'll be continuing the tradition of rewarding all those whose videos make it onto the show with a special GGSP pin. Oh, isn't it beautiful? Even more reason to keep those vids coming on down the pipeline. Now, Jem, I think we really got to go open that box. I want to meet our new co-host. You're right. Hang on. Darren? Hello, Jem. Meet us in the studio right now, and I mean right now. Oh, and bring your laser. Oh, uh, of course. <laughs> Let's get to the bottom of this. Darren, you can't just order stuff online without checking with us first. It was a safe website, noobfreecohost.net.fp. So it is a new co-host. Wait, .fp? Uh, French Perth. Huh. Uh, well, we should let whoever it is out. Affirmative. Protective eyewear at the ready. Charging my laser. <laughs> Blimey, it's stuffy in there. Hey, I'm Will. Hi, I'm Jem. Uh, this is Rad, and that's Darren. Oh, 
Oh, I know. I've been listening inside the box the whole time. Oh, Darren. You look even better than you did in the catalogue. Uh, which is lucky, because the small print said no returns or refunds. Well, welcome to the GGSP family. Uh, we have so much to talk about. But it'll have to wait until next week, because we're out of time. Could someone let me out of the box first, please? Oh, sure. Uh, until next week, right out. Jen out. Darren out. Will almost out. All right, so come here. Yeah. Just come here. Push it forward. Yeah! Yeah! Yeah!